we begin our worship this morning with the call to worship. Celebrate the Lord. Let God's joy spill from your heart, your voices, your lives. God is totally trustworthy. The Lord has everything covered. Then instead of worrying, spend time thinking about what is true. And do not forget to give thanks. Thank you, God. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. I want to welcome all that are worshiping with us this morning, especially those that are visiting. And please know it's our hope at American Lutheran that you feel at home in our time of worship and fellowship. Today we celebrate the baptism of Trayton Lee, the son of Jason and Amber Wellnitz, and all are so happy that you're doing this today. And we welcome all of you. Along with celebrating Trayton's baptism, uh, we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. And at American Lutheran, all are welcome to come to the table. No matter where you are in your faith journey, come and share in God's goodness, given in bread and wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we'll be celebrating communion by intinction. That's the dipping of the bread into the wine. We'll be serving at four different stations where there will be bread, wine, and fish. And again, all are welcome to come to the table. After our worship... Uh, Sunday school will begin, and we ask the Sunday school students, please, to go to the fellowship hall. And uh, from there, you'll go on into your your, uh, routine of the day. Today, our men's group is also serving oyster stew, chili, macaroni and cheese, and other food. We hope that many will stay and take part in this. Uh, We're asking for a free will offering with all the proceeds going to our American Lutheran Church preschool. Uh, We ask this week that you keep in your prayers those that are in need of healing. We ask that you remember this week Ralph and Lois Stinson, Belva Stinson, Roger and Deb Pauley, Cody Seehofer, Laverne Hegman, Harry and Dorothy Prendergast, Cheryl Pauley, Sharon Chapman, Wade Frosch, and all others that are in need of God's healing touch. Our sympathies are extended to the family and friends of Leona Shaw, who passed away on Friday. Leona's funeral will be here tomorrow at 1.30. And this month we ask for the prayers and uh, for the, uh, we ask your prayers for the mission and ministry at our good friends over at Emmanuel Lutheran. Thanks to all those who are helping us out in worship today. We thank Braden and Marion for serving as acolytes this morning. We thank Amber Scriber, our lector, and Susan, we thank you for serving as our accompanist this morning. We also thank our preschool and those great musicians that we'll hear just shortly. We thank our chancel choir for uh, singing this morning, and we thank the bell choir for your great music. We also thank all those people that put, that risked their lives to put (laughs) stuff on that tree. (laughs) That is a long ways up there. Um, This is... uh, food share month, and we're asking for uh, food items to be brought. Uh, We will take it from here down to the food shelf. We ask that you can bring them either uh, this Sunday or for sure next Sunday. We also are serving Meals on Wheels this month, and there are a few spots open. If you have a little time around 11 o'clock, we ask that you possibly consider signing up. Ray is looking for some uh, Christmas poinsettias. Uh, to put out. We'd like them here by next Saturday, if possible. And again, uh, oyster stew feed, uh, chili feed right after. Uh, Susan. Good morning. I have a Christmas giving opportunity for you. Joy Ranch, Lutheran Outdoors' newest camp located northwest of Watertown, welcomes people of all ages and all abilities. They do recognize that not all persons are able to afford the cost of camp, so they have established a campership program. So this year, for the price of a campership, $250, 
this collector Christmas Cowboy Joy Ranch hat could be yours. If you're interested in helping uh, send someone to camp, you can see me after church, and I'll hook you up with your collector Christmas hat. Thanks, Thank you. Susan. And Marion, we have a birthday. What, whose was it again? Taylor. Taylor Anderson, six years old. Happy birthday. On the very first Christmas night, a wondrous star shone big and bright. It marked the spot where the baby lay so the kings and shepherds could come to pray. Well, parents or grandparents, can you please stand up so your child can find you?
Please stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, the Lord of Israel, who comes down to set us free. The mighty Savior, who comes to show mercy. The dawn from on high, who guides us into peace. Amen. Let us come before God in confession. To you, O God, we lift up our souls. You know us through and through. We confess our sins to you. Remember not our sins. Remember us with your steadfast love. Show us your ways. Teach us your paths. And lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Sisters and brothers, come with joy and draw water from the well of salvation. Remember the gift of baptism. Your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. Stand up and raise your heads. The reign of God is near. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bright is arising, and soon is drawing. Please be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We praise you, O oh God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose days draw near. Watch for Messiah, let the lights vanish darkness. Lift your hands and lift 
by the gateway for the King of glory. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, O Lord, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Zephaniah, the third chapter, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear, you shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. 
The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. As on a day of festival, I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praise among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord, word of God, word of life. The second reading comes from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 through 6, and will be read responsibly. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations, proclaim that this name is exalted. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. Oh, oh, oh. 
Reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We may have peace, he came down, that we may have peace, hallelujah, forevermore. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. John said to the crowd that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the foot of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowd asked John, What then shall we do? In reply, John the Baptist said to them, Whoever has two coats must must share one with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? John said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed to you. Soldiers also asked him, "And And we, what should we do? And John said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats of false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, John the Baptist proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. What's wrong with this world? I mean, really, what is wrong with our world? I turn on the radio, turn on the TV, and listen to the news, and my eyes start welling up with tears. My heart aches. My mood becomes somber. The terrorist acts in Paris, Planned Parenthood killings in Colorado Springs, San Bernardino massacres, killing of young black men in our streets by our own police, refugee crisis, the silent war in the Ukraine and the very visible bombings in Syria, a terrorist act by ISIS all over the Middle East, and Americans calling for restrictions on others because of their faith. Violence erupts and disrupts the lives of so many, including ours. And it all happens at this time of the year when it's supposed to be the hap-happiest time of all. All these crises, all these tragedies, they're disrupting our lives. They're disrupting our Christmas. And not just the Christmas in 2015, but for those people in Paris and Colorado Springs and San Bernardino and Chicago and Minneapolis and Baltimore and Cleveland, for their families and friends of those victims, these tragedies will continue from this Christmas on forevermore in their lives. And what good ever comes from disrupting our lives and Christmas? 
For it's always our wish, isn't it, that we have that ideal Christmas, chestnuts roasting on the open fire, candle warmth, family closeness, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. But somehow every year, that long for Christmas, that ideal Christmas somehow gets disrupted. As I think back over my five plus decades, I can recall a whole host of times when Christmas was disrupted by things that happened. And as if that weren't bad enough, we here in the church actually orchestrate disruption in our, church, in our Christmas season. Because for some reason, every December, we invite the great disruptor, John the Baptist, into our midst. Two Sundays in a row, John the Baptist comes by way of our gospel and disrupts the peace and joy of our season with his sharp, fiery voice and his verbal attacks. Do we really need the blistering words of this wilderness warrior invading our sacred Christmas space? Do we really need John the Baptist coming in and disrupting us in our Christmas? Well, oddly enough, the answer is Yes, we do. We need him here and now. We need John the Baptist's jarring presence and in-your-face testimony maybe now more than ever. Because you see, John through, but because even though John doesn't work very hard at giving us the ideal Christmas, what he masterfully does is prepare us for Christ. John the Baptist doesn't do much to prepare us for Christmas, but he does prepare us for Christ. And here's the thing. We need Christ in our lives more than we need the ideal Christmas. For the truth is, when we receive Christ, then we really find out what Christmas is all about. So what is it that John is saying to us that gets us ready for Christ? Well, first of all, he tells us that Christ always comes to us as a gift, a gift born of grace. But John says this, as he always does, in disruptive ways, by shaking us loose from imagining that we are in charge and that we can make any claims we want on God. John's fiery talk about bearing fruit worthy of a repentance is explained in the context of cutting out from under the hearers any sense of entitlement. John the Baptist goes right at the Jews in today's gospel and says, being children of Abraham doesn't hold any water at all. And he's saying the same thing to us today. For you see, we are a people that think we are entitled. We say, I'm a Christian. I suffered through those four years of confirmation. I've done all those things that I'm supposed to do. I try to live a good life. That's got to count for something. But in today's gospel, John says, sorry. All the things you've done, they don't mean anything. John tells us that we have no claims upon God for nothing we do or nothing we will do makes God beholding to us. So we don't have a claim on God but God has a claim on us. And this claiming God chooses to open us up to him by way of repentance. For he asks us to set aside all those obstacles that we have put up between us and God. He asks, to, asks us to clear away all that stuff that keeps us from trusting God, from loving our neighbor, from, for caring for God's creation. Set that aside and turn to God. God makes a claim upon us that by way of that claim, God bestows on us a new way of living through repentance. By clearing away the old junk in our lives to make room for the new improved life with Christ. But what does that new life in Christ really look like? Well, that's what John the Baptist was telling that huge crowd by the Jordan River in today's gospel. 
And John does that, as we have heard before, by delivering a jarring, disruptive message. He addresses this group by the Jordan River by asking them to consider people, different people, different people from who they are, and look at them and see how they come to Christ. John the Baptist begins by talking about the super rich, those that are so rich that they have more clothing, food, and stuff than they know what to do with. Then John the Baptist moves on to converse with the crowd about tax collectors, tax collectors that owe money to Rome. And he finishes with those who shoulder weapons, the Roman legionnaires who also run the streets of Jerusalem and all the Palestinian communities. And he asked the crowd, what would it look like if the super rich, the tax collectors, and the soldiers were to live in Christ? But here's what's interesting in this story. In his dialogue with the crowd, John the Baptist doesn't tell the gathered that the super rich, the tax collectors, and the soldiers are to quit what they're doing and change who they are. He doesn't command them to quit their jobs and impoverish themselves or stop conspiring with the enemy or to refuse to bear arms. John doesn't command those people to withdraw from the world. Rather, he invites them, and in a very subtle way, all of us, to live in this world, but in a way that always has our eyes on Christ. So if you're rich enough and you have the goods of the world, you don't have to give them all away, you don't have to become a pauper. Rather, embrace your life, but always try to discern what enough is. And from time to time, give away those things that you don't need. And always, always realize that everything you have is a gift from God. And if you're like the tax collector and you have power, do the work that you're doing with a new purpose. To follow the master and refuse to abuse others by way of your position. And if you are somebody who's like a soldier, conduct yourself with dignity, serve your country, always accepting the fact that you are a child of God. And because of that, you resist the urge to step on others and use your power for violence and self, selfish ends. But always protect and serve. All three of these examples that John the Baptist gives to the crowd serves us as windows. Windows of understanding to see what a life in Christ might mean. But to live in the world as people who follow the light of Christ means that we need to clean up ourselves a little bit, repent, and turn to God. John's disrupting presence and witness caught the attention of the crowd, and we see those eyes and ears of all those people that are following him perk up. They want to know more. And I think that's what John the Baptist is asking us now as we prepare ourselves for Christmas to listen a little bit, to look for the light of Christ. Because you see, John the Baptist's main purpose was to point the way toward the one who was coming, Emmanuel, God with us, our Christ, our Messiah, who would give us the spirit of God's very presence, burning away all the chaff that separates us from God and opening our lives to a life in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.
In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in communion with the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. I present Trayton Lee for baptism. As you bring Trayton to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scripture and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ the word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Trayton grow in Christian faith and life? You promise to nurture Trayton in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and communion with the church. I do. People of God, do you promise to support Trayton and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? You renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God. I renounce them. Would the congregation please stand? <coughs> Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Emmanuel has come, is here, and is coming. Let us join in prayers for the church, the earth, and those who are in need, that all may receive what God promises to give. We pray for the church throughout the world, for bishops and pastors and seminarians, for the courage to live out the challenge of our baptism, and for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the earth, for glaciers, for the protection of dormant vegetation and hibernating animals, and for wisdom in the use and care of the creatures and landscape we live among. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the nations of the world, for soldiers and police, for all who suffer political oppression, for our enemies, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all those in need, for those who are sick, injured, Victims, for all who will die today, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For this congregation, for joy in Christ and for our community, for an increase in practices that truly enact justice and compassion, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. God of water and word, we ask that you bless Trayton as he is washed into your baptismal love and care. We ask that you also walk with Jason and Amber as they faithfully raise Trayton. Help us to be good members at American Lutheran and live out our obligation as a church to nurture and grow Trayton and his family in their life of faith. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. We praise you, O oh God, for the lives of all the faithfully departed, that we complete our baptismal journey in you. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Receive our prayers, faithful God, as we watch and wait for your coming among us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Drayton Lee Wellness, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you have given your daughters and sons new birth, cleansed them from sin, and raised them to eternal life. Sustain Trayton with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Trayton Lee Wellness, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Trayton, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. With a splash of water and a promise, we are called children of God. So simple and yet so monumental. Baptism is more than an event. It's an affirmation that begins our journey of faith that continues every day. We as a congregation have made a promise to you, Trayton, and to your family to support and equip you along your faith journey when you rise and when you rest, when you are at home and when you are far away. Jason and Amber, please receive these gifts for Trayton. A quilt from the American Lutheran Quilters, a Read With Me Bible, Luther's Small Catechism, from our congregation as a visual message to you that forming faith is a partnership between home and our congregation. We've included water toys to remind you and Trayton that water is a constant reminder of our baptism and it should be celebrated. God takes great delight in his children, and whenever you are near water, whether that be in the bathtub, washing your hands, the garden hose, or at the lake, it's a wonderful opportunity to remind Trayton just how much he is loved by you and by God. Let us welcome Trayton, the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. This is Trayton Lee Wellness, child of God, member at American Lutheran Church. Let's welcome Trayton. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another. He was so good. Thank you. Jason, God's peace to you.
the Savior comes from your cross let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song God of abundance we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating the world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At the end of the age, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant, my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God f fills the hungry with good things. Please be seated.
Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives, that we may be messengers to prepare your way, harvesters of justice and righteousness, and bearers of your eternal word. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with peace and our grace and give you peace. And we ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you.